It's an end to another lazy Monday post Diwali, but we will make sure to give you all the personal finance news here on Money Time that matters to you and your pocket. And if you are a credit card user, you need to watch this closely. Top banks in the country reported a steep fall in credit cards customer base in the second quarter of the current financial year. Banks have lost more than 25 lakh credit card customers in the September quarter and are left with a tally of less than 8 crore active credit card customers. The reason behind this is because banks had to deactivate credit cards which were not used for transactions for more than a year. Back in April this year, RBI had made a mandate to follow this rule. And looks like the wrath of COVID-19 continues in China with workers in one of the largest iPhone factories quitting their jobs and going back home due to the zero COVID strategy implemented by the Chinese government. China is again worried over an outbreak of fresh cases of COVID-19 pandemic and as a result, government has put strict COVID-19 restrictions in some towns and cities. Reportedly, work has been halted in the Foxconn plant in Zhengzhou where iPhones are assembled. Now, this comes at a time where there has been a shortage of iPhone 14 Pro smartphones in India. Now, there have been reports about charges on UPI transactions. Now, IIT Mumbai has made a report in which it has said that the government should charge 0.3% on every UPI transaction initiated on e-commerce platforms. This means if a consumer such as you and me make a payment of 1000 rupees through UPI, then an additional 3 rupees would be charged on such transactions. The report said if the government charges 0.3% on every UPI transaction, then it will generate 5,000 crore rupees as additional income every year, which could be used to strengthen the security of UPI. And Federal Bank has launched festive offers on fixed deposits. Bank account holders can get interest of 7% on FDs of 700 days. On one-year FDs, depositors will only get 5.6% rate of interest, while senior citizens, on the other hand, can get a digital rate of 0.65% on all FDs booked for a minimum period of 5 years. Public sector lender Canada Bank is also giving 7% interest rate on FDs of 666 days. On one-year FDs, depositors will only get 6.25% rate of interest and senior citizens will get a 0.5% higher rates on all FDs of 180 days or more. A couple of days ago, Mumbai-based asset management company JM Financial Mutual Fund had launched the JM Mid-Cap Fund. Now, as the name suggests, it is an open-ended mid-cap fund. The NFO will close on November 14, 2022. Business Daily Financial Express quoted Satish Ramanathan, who is the CIO at the equity segment of JM Financial AMC, and I quote, the mid-cap fund will invest in high-growth companies. He also added that valuation-wise also, mid-caps currently offer a very good opportunity for investors to build a long-term portfolio. The fund will take advantage of the India story over the next few decades. Investors can choose to invest in the NFO in a staggered manner also. And here's a chance for citizens to invest in roads and highways of the country. The National Highways Authority of India had recently traded its Infrastructure Investment Trust on the BSC. Business Daily Mint says that the government was mulling allowing retail investors to own equities of NHAI's investment trust. The issue of NHAI's trust may open for subscription in February next year. It will happen for the first time in the history of this country that retail investors will get to own stake in any infrastructure investment trust. Next news is on FPI's investment in India. FPI's have remained net sellers of India's equity market in October as well. Till now, FPI's have sold net 1,586 crore rupees in October. This is the second month in a row that FPI's have been net sellers. In September 2022, foreign investors had pulled out 7,600 crore rupees from the capital market. But brokerage firms are optimistic on FPI's investment for the next month. In November, the net inflow is likely to remain positive. FPI's have also been net sellers of domestic debt market as well. These institutions have pulled out more than 1,500 crore rupees in October 2022. Up next, we move on to IPOs. DCX Systems' 500 crore rupee IPO went on the floors on Monday. This week, a total of four firms are slated to launch their IPOs. The other three firms are Bikaji Foods International, Fusion Microfinance Limited, and Global Health Limited, which operates hospitals under the Medanta brand. In the current year till date, 
22 companies have floated their IPOs to raise over 44,000 crores from the capital market. In 2021, 63 IPOs had raised more than 1.19 lakh crore rupees, according to data from the exchanges. IPO market is expected to remain subdued going ahead. And speaking of IPOs, the initial share sale process of manufacturer of snacks and sweets Bikaji Foods International Limited is slated to hit the floors on November 3, 2022. Bikaji Foods on Monday said it has set a price band of 285 to 300 rupees for its 881 crore rupees IPO. Retail investors will be able to bid for a minimum of 50 equity shares in one lot. The IPOs will be 100% OFS. Promoters and existing shareholders will offload around 2.94 crore equity shares. Bikaji is the largest manufacturer of Bikineri Bujia. It is a leading maker of packaged Rasagulla, Son Papdi and Gulab Jamun. And we close today's money time with some sweet news from the Lal Street. Benchmark indices Sensex and Nifty ended over 1% higher on Monday. The 30 share BSC Sensex crossed 60,000 mark as it rallied more than 780 points, while the broader NSE Nifty advanced 1.27% to cross 18,000 mark. From the Sensex pack, Ultratech Cement, Mahindra and Mahindra, HTSC Sun Pharma, HTSC Bank, Larsen and Tubro. Bajaj Finserv and Bajaj Finance were the major winners. International oil benchmark Brent crude was trading at more than 95 US dollars per barrel. That's all we have for you on today's Money Time. Do subscribe to the Money 9 English's YouTube channel and download the Money 9 app from the Google, Google Play Store and App Store if you haven't downloaded yet. This is me Ajay signing off. See you tomorrow at the same time. And until then, take care and good night.